So depending on what level you are, this either looks like a nightmare or maybe something a little bit more reasonable <laughs> to tackle. But I think if you're doing your GCSE, this is an absolute nightmare if you ever see it. Uh, a level, you will be expected to deal with things like this. This is where we have some function of X inside the function itself. Hence, what you're looking at is what you expect to be a quadratic, but it's got power four. Uh -huh. Okay, so where does this come from? I guess the first thing is, if you do expect it to be a quadratic because it looks like one, you're on the right track. The first step is to is realizing that it should be a quadratic. If you have a power of four like this, it can be written as x squared squared. So in this first term, if you're looking for something squared, that something is x squared. So with that in mind, we make a substitution. So we use a letter that we haven't got in there already, and it's usually y, a very popular letter in maths, use whatever you want, it's arbitrary. Let's say y is equal to that function that we've just found. That kind of makes sense, look, because if you've got up the, at the top here, you've got x squared squared, and then you've got the x squared, it's kind of like your basic quadratic where you have an x, you go down in power, x squared and then x. Have a look what happens when we make this substitution. So we have y squared at the front, subtract 2y, and again, 63 just stays the same. And all we're doing in this instance is uh, factorizing. So we don't have equal to zero. We just have to put it into brackets. So now we think about numbers that are going to multiply together to get 63. That'll help us put it in a bracket. And I think, these are quite nice numbers. I can see that we've got seven times nine. So we're going to put that into the brackets and to get to negative two, we'll have plus seven and negative nine like so. And obviously our job is to factorize X something, function of X, but we've got Y now. Well, this, this Y was arbitrary, right? It's our own substitution. So we, we can't really run with that and say we've factorized it. We're going to use this substitution now. And we're going to put it back into our uh, factorized form so that we get rid of the Y's. So to the right, we'll have the answer. So wherever you see a Y, it's now X squared. And the rest is as is. Now this isn't always the best way to go. Um, you may see straight away from here to here when you get really good, you might see, ah, I can see my quadratic. I'm just going to imagine that it's in this new form. But you know, if you're in the exam or you're under pressure, having that substitution, having that formal method is much more reliable. And uh, in time to rely on that logic is a good thing. When you start dealing with maths, which is very difficult, the formalized logic allows you to trust what you're exploring. Um, but, you know, part of growth is to try and jump the queue a bit with these things. And the more complex your work, the more simple this older work becomes. And who's to say you can't go straight to that final form. More interesting is where we go on to solve this, but that's for a different video. Okay, so we just took this to the next level down the bottom, didn't we? Um, made it <laughs> x to the power of 8. But it's the same same method. So just pause the video at this point, see if you can do it based on what we've just done in the first one. Okay, so if you've come back from a little time and effort, what we're looking for is something squared. So clearly this... If I write it out, and I may as well because I've got time, it'd be four to times two, so that'd be eight. And that correlates with the, the 17 x4. So I've put the variable, the function that's inside the function, I've put it in brackets. So you can see quite clearly that if we made the substitution, I don't know, should we use m? m equals x to the power four. 
we'll end up with a nice quadratic, which would be m squared. Subtract 17m plus 16. We're actually not in the business of solving. Um, so just factorizing means put it into brackets. And with 16, we're probably going to use 16 and 1. I, I, I don't think I've ever done that before in, in, the, in my career in math. I don't think I've ever done this particular quadratic, which is rare. I've done a lot of them more than once. Um, so subtract 16, subtract 1. It just looks really weird. Right, so we didn't want to solve this in terms of m. We wanted x. So we're going to make that substitution again. I'm going to have my answer on the right again, just like up the top. Wherever we see an m, it's going to be replaced with x to the 4, and the rest remains. Now, this is just the first stage of factorization. The, you know, you can go on, um, and hopefully you can see a difference of two squares here. So, um, you know what, why not? Let's do it. I didn't intend to, but that's the first stage. Um, the second one is noticing the difference of two squares. As you can see, square-like numbers, but we're going to square into brackets. So that first one's going to change into two brackets. So we're just focusing on this first half. And uh, if we square root those terms, we get x squared. That's going to be the first term. One's positive, one's minus. And if you didn't realize we're doing difference of two squares, I think I said that, just want to double check. Uh, and then the square root of 16 is 4. And then the same with the right hand side here, that's going to turn into another couple of brackets. So we're doing this one. That's x squared again. And then the square root of 1, which is 1. I know it's, it's sometimes, especially in a very uh, difficult situation in the exam, you might think, oh gosh, what is it? Um, actually, you might have noticed we've got more. <laughs> it goes deeper. Uh, see this this one here is the difference of two squares, and so is this one. So just while I see it, we can do that again. So we've got x squared plus maybe that look like a squared four, and x plus two x subtract two x squared plus one and another difference of two squares at the end. Wow, so a lot of brackets there, but I mean, how many did you expect? If you look at how many solutions we're gonna have, if we put that equal to zero, we're gonna have uh, one from here, we're gonna have one from all the brackets that aren't squared, and then from here, we're gonna have times two. So unsurprisingly, eight solutions, and that's, pretty much indicative because the power of 8 should have 8.